right. Well, we are live, and I am super excited to be joined by the man with the plan and the man with the long beard. Uh, we have Abe Chamali from XP Strategy. So, Abe, thank you for joining us here on this AMA live stream. Oh, well, thank you for having me. I don't know about the plan, but yeah, I do have the beard. Well, I'm sure you got some plan, some idea of what's happening with uh, PPC. So I'm excited to have a conversation here with you today. All right. So just real quick to make sure uh, I didn't screw anything up because uh, even before we were getting started, I was like having trouble, like figuring out, like connecting like my audio so I could hear Abe. So I feel like I'm always going to mess something up. It was, it was actually me this time, by the way. Oh, yeah. And so, you no, it was both. Of yeah. Us. So you oh, was both of us. There was an issue with your computer recognizing the right microphone yep. and me being connected to the right audio output. And so sometimes there are audio issues. So just to make sure we're not just communicating to each other. If you're watching this, can we hear you? And just, I reserve the right to do giveaways if you participate. So if you would like to potentially get something, I would highly recommend saying, yes, I hear you. And this is only for people who hear us live. So if you're watching the replay and hear us live, uh, join us on the live stream and you never know, we might be giving something else away in the future. So uh, join us live or if just click the little thumbs up icon. That's nice too. Um, but just want to make sure you can hear us. And then also, I'm just curious, where's everybody joining us from? So uh, Abe, where are you joining us from? I am located in sunny New Jersey. Sunny New Jersey. It, today, today it's pretty sunny. It's been uh, up and down, but spring is finally sprung. Spring has finally sprung. Well, that's nice. I am in Florida, and I, I can't complain about the, the cold or anything, but I did go outside this morning. It was a little brisk for Florida for morning, although it's like hot now. So, Are you going to tell me the temperature to make me upset? <laughs> uh, no, I won't, I won't even say, because it's probably the same temperature it would have been like in february <laughs> oh gosh we have nice weather here in florida but uh the good news is uh people can hear us so that's good um so thank you to uh to kim to exit in seven um that sounds like a, a goal of some sort an aspiration i like that um and then leonardo says yes i can hear you so then we also have Exit in 7 is joining us from LA. I'm assuming that's Los Angeles, not Louisiana. Um, could, could be Louisiana. either. Could be either or. Could be either or. That's that's the challenge. If it's L period A period, then it's Los Angeles. If it's LA period, then it would be Louisiana. So without the periods, we just don't, we don't know. We just don't yeah, know. Next next week you can do the geography AMA. That's true. We could do the geography AMA. So what, what geography questions do you have for Abe? Uh, no, oh, we're going to be asking PPC questions. So uh, I'm going to get to a couple other people said where they're from here. But if you have questions, I would highly recommend drop them into the chat, whether you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, or LinkedIn, wherever. Uh, drop them into the chat. We go, for the most part, first come, first serve. I do reserve the right to go completely out of order if I feel like it for whatever reason in the moment, um, which is at my sole discretion. Um, so uh, just highly recommend, though, sooner your question, the more likely it's going to be answered. Uh, we've been doing this a few times now. Uh, that I've been doing it. And every time we've done it, we've ran out of time and we didn't get to everyone's questions. So uh, sooner you ask, sooner you are going to get an answer uh, from the man with the plan. So uh, Shyla is joining us in Palestine. Is that Palestine in the Middle East or Palestine, Texas? Just curious. Uh, barbecue rubs. Uh, Sheila also says, hello, everyone. So all right, so we are getting some uh, questions starting to come in here. Exit in seven confirmed Los Angeles. XPS Kia, who I think is your assistant, is uh, giving you a high five. Probably yes, she's yes. my. I always bring around my own uh, cheering cheering squad. You got it. You got to have someone in your corner, right? Yes. But I'm I'm in your corner, Abe. So I'm excited that you're here. Okay, now um, that I have one, I don't need to. Bye. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. All right, so we. Did Shiloh confirm Palestine or Palestine in the, I think it's Palestine is the correct pronunciation in the Middle East. We have Pakistan. We have hello from uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. We have the Philippines, also the Philippines. So we've got people from 
almost all around the world joining us today. So that's super exciting. So if you commented, um, we would love more than to give you a free, um, what am I going to give away? I'm going to give away the free advanced SEO course from my Amazon guy. Um, all you got to do is email Kevin at Maxim, or sorry, Kevin at myamazonguy.com. I was uh, confusing myself there. Kevin at myamazonguy.com. Let me know you were on the live stream with Abe and I promised you the advanced SEO course. If you just say, hey, Kevin, I was on the live stream and you promised me something, I'll forget what I promised. So please remind me. And this is only for people who are live. So if you're watching the replay, uh, join us live in the future. So Abe, tell us a little, before we start getting into questions, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Sure. So uh, my name is Abe Shamali. I have an Amazon marketing agency called XP Strategy. Mm -hmm. We work with sellers looking to scale, um, typically six and seven figure sellers, although we do have some at uh, sm both smaller and larger. Um, before running my agency, I was actually selling both online and offline for something like 30 years. Um, I started selling in 1991, even before there was a World Wide Web. We were advertising in the back of uh, camera magazines. We'd have like mm. with a big phone number and we'd take phone calls and send things to people all over the country. Oh, wow. Um, Oh yeah, it was it was a completely different world. We would like pretend we had a computer by like banging on a calculator and say, "Okay, we're putting your order in the handwritten invoice." And like, yeah. <laughs> in the system, I'm like, uh, "The printer broke." Um, but yeah, <laughs> we would we'd, we'd be f pretending we had a computer. Um, of course, the world evolved. Computers actually did come along, and uh, we went from you know, uh, phone orders to actual internet orders. Um, we started with a Yahoo store. We built our own website. We graduated through the Google ads to eBay ads to Amazon ads. And all the while, you know, I was always mostly focused on the ads as part of all the companies I ran while selling. Um, I had the opportunity to pivot into just managing ads. And I've been doing that for sellers since uh, 2018. So it's been a while. Nice. Well, I'm sure yeah. you've seen a few things in the ad space of what works and what doesn't. I've, I've seen a lot of both. Yes. 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 And so there's definitely learnings from both, both the, Hey, this is what you should do. And the Socratic uh, narrowing down to what you should not do. Socratic Pareto, pick your philosopher. <laughs> we've got a, exactly. we've got a theology that might work. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So we'll start getting into questions. Um, but I did just want to bring up um, that it was brought to my attention that I think I said barbecue ribs and it's actually barbecue rubs, BBQ rubs, or maybe it's BBQ rubs. So I apologize if I said it incorrectly. Uh, Jessa is joining us from our team. She's got her thumbs up. So I got somebody in my corner too. Um, uh -oh. We've got, we got the... Todd joining us from Florida. So hey there, Todd. Uh, in the uh, Tampa area, or he's probably traveling to, he's a jet setter. He's an awesome guy. Hey, Todd. Um, and then Armando is joining us from Mexico. That is awesome. So let's start getting into some of the questions. So the first question to us is brought to us 32,000 feet in the air on a cross country flight. And that is when adjusting, so we, we got to give this one uh, justice, especially if uh, Jeffrey paid for internet up there. Um, when adjusting a bid down to a lower A cost, what percentage or amount increments and what frequency do you go by to not upset the AI? Um, I understand too much too fast is a bad thing. Yeah, tell tell us your opinion on this one. This is also controversial. Yeah, this is definitely controversial. I've seen... I've seen and done so many things on this. So the first thing I'll say, even before answering the question, uh, Jeffrey, I am thoroughly impressed that you're able to join a live stream at 32,000 feet in the air. I would love to know uh, what airline you're on right now, because whenever I fly, I am not streaming anything. I'm lucky to get like little drips and drabs of messaging here and there. Yeah. So, so we, we, we hope you still have internet and you didn't go over a, a dead patch, Jeffrey. Yeah, hopefully you We're get excited to hear, that you're back. Hopefully you get to hear the answer live. Yes. Um, so as far as adjusting bids downwards, um, in general, you are correct that it's better to go down by imp increments. Um, 
the best increments I find are five percent or less. So mm. if you've got a dollar bid, you know you don't want to go but down by forty cents or fifty cents, and that's actually a mistake that I see in a lot of accounts sometimes. Um, often when your A cost is much higher than you'd want, if you've got a fifty percent A cost and you want it to be one third lower, people think it's as simple as just dropping your bids by a third, and you'll simply have a third lower A cost. It doesn't usually work that way because of two things. The first thing is that Amazon wants to work with advertisers who are committed to spending on ads. Um, the system is geared towards getting you to spend more, for better or worse. We we know this. We try to work around it, but there is a reality that they want sellers who are consistently committed to marketing. When you cut your bids in half, or by a third, or by two thirds, that shows that you really would like to turn off your ads if you could. It's not great. Um, so you want to show that you are still committed. But the second thing that happens is the second factor to keep in mind is that if you decrease your ads too much, you will tank your placements. So if mm -hmm. your dollar bid puts you in the middle of page one, um, 95 cents might get you a little bit lower on page one. Um, you know, it might keep you at the same spot just for a lower bid. It's not going to change your positioning very dramatically. So you'll be able to see how it affects what you're doing. You know, you'll be able to see how it affects your ACOS. You'll be able to see also how it affects your sales. But if you cut your bid in half, you are very likely to move your position to multiple pages further down. So all of a sudden, not only are you not getting any positioning or visibility, all of your sales disappear. And mm -hmm. that is not what you want with your ads. You still want to get sales out of them. So the, that's the long answer. The short answer is, yes, smaller increments are advised. Gotcha. All right. So do it in, in sequence, in steps, is AIMS. Yeah. I'll also uh, say, by the way, that I, that I don't believe that there is any actual AI. Um, I've been working with software forever, and uh, I think that the correct term is machine learning. They basically take like lots of data, and the people who run it will build in a whole bunch of rules, but it's not genuinely figuring out anything that didn't exist before. Minor point, but like, just look well, at AI it's, with look at AI it's with. It's more like, reductive. It's finding patterns and things, but based on rules that people put in there. It, exactly, it can't really invent anything. It's hard, you know, and. Uh, because because there's whole bunches of rules set up, there are opportunities for people with a little bit different set of rules or a little bit different way of looking at things to figure out interesting ways of, of attacking a problem and to genuinely find ways to do things better. If there was like a real AI, a super AI that existed, everything would come to the exact same level almost immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody would figure out the exact right bid within like 19 hours. And that's mm -hmm. it. Everybody, everything would get completely stuck. Nobody has a yeah. chance to succeed. So for now, I'm happy that real AI isn't here yet. Good, 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 good. Yes. All right. So now that we don't have to worry about Hal um, telling us, well, that's highly irregular or whatever that was in the Space Odyssey 2001, whatever that movie was. All right. So Jalil asks... Um, I want to focus on finding more products to target for product A. If I run a single ASIN expanded product targeting hitman for target A, but only the ASIN I target is product A in the campaign. Let's go to part two, which I have to scroll down a bit for. Um, will this essentially act as an auto campaign, but strictly for product A to give me ASINs that Amazon thinks my product will convert well for um so basically target your own which i don't think you can do targeting your own product if it's a sponsored no product. i think he's i don't think he's targeting his own product i think he's Product A is not his product. Wait, finding more products to target for product A. Okay, so yeah, I don't believe you can target your own product with expanded product targeting. I believe it's only with standard product targeting. But I'm also not sure what he's trying to find. I would I would really just recommend an auto campaign's ASINs that it's generating. Um, the best way to find product targeting 
products to target is using the product opportunity explorer. You know, that gives you a lot of data with regards to the top competitors in a space. Um, you can also use it just by going through Amazon and scraping page by page by page. Um, you can, there are extensions that you can add that will download all of the ASINs on a page and then you can start to filter them. You know, you can use Helium 10's uh, extension that basically lets you filter by star ratings or by price so that you can find people who are less competitive than you are. And you can go through all of your top searches and just get tons and tons of ASINs. You don't need to overthink it by letting Amazon do the research. You can do it a lot faster and a lot more effectively. Yeah, definitely. And one thing I did just want to give a, a quick, absolutely shameless plug for you are a speaker at the upcoming PPC Mastery Summit, um, oh, yes. which is a summit with Abe and about 20 other amazing PPC experts. And I don't remember the nuances of it, but there was at least one or two speakers that kind of touched on the topic we were just talking about with ASIN targeting. I think they were kind of along the same lines of Abe was, but like more in depth than we could probably go into in this format. So if you don't yet have a ticket, you can always go to ppcmasterysummit.com. Uh, the summit will be May 16th or the 18th. So this is uh, May 9th as we are live. So literally one week from today. So time is running out. You can grab a ticket for less than 10 bucks. So it's hard to grab a lunch anymore for that price. No, uh, depending on where you live, that won't even get you an alcoholic drink these days. I know. I know. It's crazy. So this is one of the best deals there is. Go to ppcmasterysummit.com. And then also, uh, Abe contributed to a blog post that we we're going to put out soon about some of the best tips from some of the best experts, which I won't take any of the uh, uh, fire away from that. So uh, more coming soon. So if you're on the My Amazon Guy email list, uh, you can expect to get a email soon with that. And we'll be sharing that on social. So more to come there. Yeah. All right. By the way, I, I think if, I just want to like, we spent a couple of minutes trying to figure out what the last question was. I I feel like uh, it took away from what the correct answer should be. I don't know what correct mm. is, but what my answer would be. Uh, my answer would be don't use ad campaigns to figure out what ASINs you want to target. Um, go through Amazon directly, use all of the filters and all of the other ways that you can pull lists of ASINs to target. And mm -hmm. that'll be a lot more effective than figuring out where, what Amazon thinks is right. Gotcha. Awesome. All right. So if I have a seven color based variation, should I advertise all the colors in a single campaign or not? Sure. So um, I work with a lot of apparel brands and mm -hmm. also a lot of other uh, brands that have color variations. Uh, sometimes seven, sometimes fewer, sometimes as many as 20 or 30. And um, this is something that comes up a lot. Basically, you're going to actually want to do two things. The first thing you're going to want to do is, yes, run some of your advertising targeting the full group of colors. When you do that, Amazon is going to test and self-select for which color converts best. Um, almost always, it's going to be black or white or red, depending on the type of thing you're selling. But typically when you search for a thing, the reason you see most of the results in the same color is because that's the color that sells the best. Mm. So the first thing that have you don't necessarily need to automatically decide it yourself, but you'll see that Amazon steers the traffic there. So that's the first thing. The second thing is you will want to run separate ads focused on each color. So if there are color specific searches, if you're selling a flower pot that's red and there are searches for red flower pot, you very much don't want to put the a target for a green flower pot inside that campaign or that group. I would suggest running separate color focused campaigns for each of the colors that have their own search volume. Um, you can run, you can go through Helium 10, you can go through Amazon's autocorrect and typically see what searches are happening for specific colors, or you can just build them all out if you're not sure. Ideally, when creating the product, you will have had a good idea what colors are likely to sell based on what people are looking for. But yeah, so you'll want to have one group of campaigns just targeting the full set and then separate campaigns targeting color-based searches. I like that. All right, so next up, we have... Part one of two. Hi, I like that. 
starts off very friendly. Very friendly. Uh, what is the best strategy to set up broad phrase, exact match and product targeting campaigns to revive sales for products already launched a year ago? I've lost a lot of dinero and auto campaigns. Part two of two. Also, how many keywords per manual campaign do you see? Let's, this is not the it's second a, it, part of the first question. It's two different questions. So let's, let's start with the first one. Right. Okay. So the first question is, um, what is the best? We can actually probably remove the middle words. What's the best way to revive sales for a product launched a year ago? Um, okay. So there's no easy answer. There's no answer of do A and then success happens. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing we need to understand is what's happening right now. Did the product never ever succeed and you want to start pushing fresh or did it have success in the past and then something happened? And um, if something happened with a successful product, the question is what happened? So I'll give, uh, I'll sort of try to answer those as three main scenarios. Scenario number one, if the product never really took off, uh, it will be very hard. No matter what answer I give you, it will be very hard to turn a loser into a winner. That's just mm. the that's just the reality. Right. If a product has existed in Amazon system and has never taken off, Amazon sort of looks at that product that has already existed for all this time and hasn't had a change to it as not really a successful product. The best thing you can do is maybe call it back and relaunch it as a new product. That's sort of an unofficial suggestion. Right. Ideally, you, ideally, tread you, lightly on that one. Be careful, but uh, I, I don't can't recommend say I've never it. Done it. I can say that I have seen other people do it, um, and a fresh ASIN is considered a fresh ASIN in Amazon system. So that's sort but of you the start thing. off with all new reviews and everything else. So just right, yeah, it's a thing people do. Uh, it is against Amazon's terms of service. I will say that I can't officially recommend doing this. I will mm -hmm. only say that I have seen people do it. So we'll be clear about that. Right. Just um, we're just because we're reporting that it happened doesn't mean that we uh, yeah. endorse it. Exactly. No endorsements here. Only observations. Right. Yes. So that's that's scenario number one. Uh, scenario number two is a product which was successful and um, stopped selling, and now you want to revive it. Mm. And there we got to add, there we sort of have two main situations of why this might have happened. Option number one is you were doing great, you sold out, and you got product back into stock. Situation number two is something else happened. Maybe there was some defective inventory, or there was an attack by a competitor. Uh, all of a sudden, the product looks less good in Amazon system. You have negative reviews or something, ha you know, a bunch of returns which tanked your inventory health. Something happened to make Amazon like the product less. Mm. So if you ran out of stock, the reality is that um, it's a challenging situation. And what we typically see, if it's possible to get it back to what it was doing before, it will likely take something like at least as long as it was out of stock or sometimes even longer than it was out of stock for it to get back into the good graces of Amazon system. One big factor is how fast it was selling and when it went out of stock. The faster it was selling the day it went out of stock, the more Amazon looks at this product as something that was successful that was sold out mm -hmm. and they'll like it better when it comes back in. If you were trying to slow down sales on the way out of stock, the final day it goes out, Amazon looks at it like a slow seller on the day it went out of stock. When it comes back in, this new item or this item that's back in is a slow seller in their mind. That's my that's my theory on how to address items that you know will go out of stock. Don't slow down your marketing. You want it to sell out at the fastest speed possible. Just, you know, that's a side issue. Um, so keep in mind that you will have a slog. You should continue to do what worked for you. Um, there are lots of ways to structure your campaigns and um, essentially re-pushing the way that worked should work again if you give it long enough time. Um, the much harder thing to deal with is if you had a whole bunch of bad reviews or some other negative impact event that's not inventory based. Um, in those cases, you will really have to address that issue. You'll have to deal with slower sales while you accumulate additional five-star reviews to bring it up to speed. You will have to go an amount of time to let those issues age off if there were return issues. And you should address the things which caused the returns to happen. 
So it's not a great answer. It's not even exactly a PPC based answer, but you do have to look at the root cause of why it's not selling. That's going to lead to what your action should be. Got it. So figure out maybe why it wasn't selling, not just with PPC and then kind of go from there. All right. So next up, this is also another extremely controversial, <laughs> When I say controversial, not everyone hundred percent agrees. And so sometimes you have to test these things, but I want to hear Abe's perspective. How many keywords per manual campaign do you suggest I keep and should it be per search volume on Helium 10 or do you suggest crafting single keyword campaigns only per 80-20 principle? All right. So, yes, this is definitely uh, – there is definitely a lot of different opinions here. Feelings are probably going to be hurt here. I know whose feelings will be hurt, actually. <laughs> I specifically know the people who very much disagree with me. Uh-oh. Okay. Uh-oh. But it's right. nothing personal. Nothing personal. No. Just business. So here's the way that I address here's the way that I typically recommend running keywords per manual campaign. Um, I find that the sweet spot is five to ten manual keywords mm -hmm. per campaign. And you ideally want to group them in ways that the keywords are similar. So one way to group them in ways that are similar are similar search volumes. You know, if you run your list of search terms or keywords, you're going to see some that have search volumes in the hundreds, some in the thousands, some in the tens of thousands, some much bigger. Um, you don't want to put a search term that has like 147 searches in the same ad group as one with 175,000 searches. Right. The one with 175,000 searches will swallow up all of your budget. Nothing left for the little bit for the little swimmies. Mm -hmm. So, and those little swimmies might be some of your most profitable ones too. Little swimmies grow up to be big fish. Yes, they very well can. So you want to group them by ways that are similar. Another way to group them is by relevance to your product. So there might be a group of terms that exactly describe your product. And then there might be another group of terms which are the accessory for your product, but still lead to sales for you. You'll want to group those separately because they will perform differently. So... Basically, you'll want to group those separately. And you, again, five to 10 is about the right amount of search uh, keywords per search term. There are two exceptions. The first exception, which leads to single keyword campaigns, is with your best performing terms, but they are already proven. So if you have a keyword which is generating hundreds of sales a month and with a strong ACoS, give it its own keyword, give it, give it its own single keyword campaign. Um, there are a couple of other scenarios where, you, where you'll want to put a single keyword by itself, something which demands a lot of budget but might not be a great performer, and that has to be adjusted on its own aside from the rest. You'll want to split out its spend budget, mm -hmm. certain types of ranking campaigns. There are a few scenarios where you'll want to have a single keyword campaign, but every single time you do it, it's with intention. Your mm -hmm. default should not be a single keyword campaign. Um, there's one person who only does single keyword campaigns. There are softwares that do only single keyword campaigns. As a rule of thumb, those are very, very difficult to manage at scale. And yes. when you have, you know, if you fully fund the budgets for those, you'll end up with enormous, enormous spend budgets with not a lot of control over it. So grouping helps you control the results you get. The example on the other way, though, a situation where you might want to have five more than five or 10 keywords in a group is when you're running very long tails. So there are products which have a lot of keyword depth. What I mean by keyword depth is ways to search for a product. Certain products, there's only two ways to look at it. And certain products, there are hundreds and hundreds of terms which have five or six words in it. All of those terms have very little search volume, but you want to be there for all of them with, you know, with focus. So in those cases, you can put 50 or 100 or more keywords in a campaign, and even a $10 budget will actually be enough for the likely amount of mm -hmm. clicks you're likely to get across all of those because there's right. so little search volume on each. So that's the other situation where you'd want to use more than that 5 or 10 keyword scale. Otherwise, as a general rule of thumb, what I find is when you put too many keywords in a campaign, a few keywords get traffic and sales. The rest just sort of hang around. Even if your bids are appropriate, there isn't truly enough budget to feed all of them comfortably, and Amazon starts tailing off the extras. Gotcha. Good stuff. All right, so a couple of um, follow-ups. I did say BBQ rubs correctly, so I got credit for that. Um, 
Leonardo says high five. And um, you would ask the question about Jeffrey on a 32,000 foot cross country flight. What airline was it? And it's Delta. So shout out to Delta, at least on this flight from yes. point A to point B. We're not sure where A or B is, but uh, Jeffrey at least is able to watch us live. Uh, Scott says he lost stream. Sorry about that, Scott. I've not heard that from anyone else. Um, and I was complaint, looking into complaint uh, to complaint to Google or Facebook. Not not our not on yeah. us. So Steve says I want to have the best PPC strategies. That's not a question. We're just going to say that's a wish. And you're in the right place. I, I so, do too. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we all want that. But also, you had made the comment earlier about there is no really artificial intelligence. It's all just a collection of rules or algorithms. And so. That is the case here. So, all right. So now to get back to some questions being asked. Um, There's one question I for, for you. Hope, which I'm curious if that's I like iPhone or I as an interstate for which goes from Tampa to Orlando to Daytona, or is that nothing to do with interstate four in Florida? Um, so what rules do you have to negate an exact match keyword? 10 clicks, no sales, et cetera. When do you negate? When do you not negate? Um, okay. So the standard, we have a standard rule and then we try to um, adjust as necessary. The standard rule is double the conversion rate. So if our conversion rate for a product is generally, say, 10%, 10% means that for every 10 clicks, on average, we're getting a sale. Um we'll typically go to double that before negating something because we mm -hmm. want to give it a chance to make the sale, even if it's a little bit out of the range of average. Um, if, a, if a keyword has a conversion rate or if the product across all of its keywords has a conversion rate of 2%, that means that one out of every 50 clicks is turning into a sale. So in that case, you'll give it up to 100 clicks. That's not optimal, but there are products which indeed do have you know, uh, conversion rates like that. Now, the thing which makes this question interesting is that he mentioned it as, or I don't know if I for hope how they identify, so I won't say he, but um, they mentioned that it's an exact match keyword. The thing with an exact match keyword which makes this interesting is ideally this should be proven to some extent. So an exact, you've already sort of decided that this is a good keyword. And if it's mm. a good keyword and you're not making sales by whatever just your regular conversion rate is, something is up even before you get to double the conversion rate. So pay attention and try to figure out why the sales are not happening. Good point. Good point. Because oftentimes it's not just about, you know, changing the bid. You might have to do some adjustments to your listing. Right. It's like, again, the reasons behind what things are happening. All right. This is a very simple one one sentence answer. Uh, hello, I wanted to ask you where your product appears on if you give a top of search and an ASIN targeting campaign. Okay. Well, this one is actually, no, 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 this is, we're throwing the top of search modifier. This yeah, everybody always... loves top of search questions. You need a separate AMA just for top of search questions. Right, right, right. Um, I, yeah, I did my research. Uh, apparently every, every AMA has like three top of search questions. Uh, so People do we're, like we're one for three so far. Yes. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Okay. So let's let's unpack this a little bit. Um, and the the answer actually is pretty straightforward. ASIN targeting um, does not work the way you might think. If you would think about what the words ASIN targeting means, it means that if you're targeting a certain ASIN, you'd show up on the page of that advertised product. So if you target this product, you'll show up on the search on the product page for the ASIN you're targeting. That is not the only place your searches show up. When you do ASIN targeting, you show up on the product page, yes, but you also show up for the searches where that product is ranked strongly. So if you're selling a water bottle and you run an ASIN targeting campaign for that water bottle, you will show up on the page of the water bottle, but you will also show up for searches of water bottle. The top of search modifier is pushing you to the top of search for those keyword searches. Mm. 
Now, one other thing that might be happening, I don't know for sure. The first part I do know. The other thing that might be happening is you might be moving closer to the top of the carousel on the product product page. If there's 46 items in that carousel and your bid puts you on like page nine out of 14, a top of search modifier might move you closer to the beginning of the carousel. That I don't know for sure. That's me thinking out loud. The first part I do know. You are showing up for searches as well on an ASIN targeting campaign. Yeah, that th th this one has also become a little controversial. I actually had somebody about two summits back give a whole presentation on their thesis on this. I forget who it was. I think it was Brendan Pettit from Titan Network. And his whole thing was like showing that I, I think most people never really thought about this. If you do an ASIN targeting campaign, it's giving you data on top of search, which doesn't make sense because you think it's just product placement. So there's more to this one. So th th this is interesting. Right. So it could be where well, once once you realize that it's once you realize that that ASIN targeting campaign gets shown for lots of keyword searches. Yeah. Then all of the regular thinking about keyword searches comes into play. Uh, yeah, it, it, it totally it kind of opens up kind of a. I don't want to use a profanity here, but a, a, a mind melting um, can of worms where you're just like, it makes you question a lot of the other data. And it could right. just be a reporting thing. Who, who knows? Or somebody at Amazon is just yeah. messing well, with we, us. Well, we know this because we know this from a couple of ways. First of all, Amazon tells us this. But besides that, you know, we know this because... In, a camp, in an account where you're not running any automatic campaigns and you know where every single keyword should be showing, you'll still show up for searches that are not anywhere in your search term report. That's coming from the pace and targeting. That's the, only, that's the only place that's left to have been the source of showing up. Gotcha. All right. Jalil asks, not a PPC question, but will the PPC summit videos be pre-recorded so we can watch whenever I... My age is showing here. WFH will work technically from, work be, from home. Oh, work from home. That's, of course. I work from home <laughs> will technically be working. So it'd be hard to be locked into every video all day. Yes. So with the PPC Mastery Summit, one thing we do a little differently than a lot of other summits where it's just like, hey, you got to watch during this defined time period. If you miss it, you miss it. So Starts on Tuesday, every day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, starting next week, 16th, 17th, and 18th of May, 9 a.m. We add additional sessions every day. And then um, you'll have at least until the, the night of the 18th, midnight Eastern time. So depending what time zone you're in, you'll have at least until that time to watch the sessions. I don't take away the sessions once we add them until the end of the summit. So you will have plenty of time to watch them if you're from home. And you can get more learnings from Abe. Abe, what was your topic? Um, I forgot. No, uh, I didn't forget. It was uh, getting enough data to make the right PPC decisions. Yes. More is more. And more Abe more. taught you all about that. All right. So scrolling on down... Please kind of... this. Do you provide A plus content services to create an optimized Amazon storefront for brand registry that I can hire your firm for? If not, any other competitive company you recommend to set up AMZ store? Oh well, um, um does not work for me, but yes, I do actually provide cr content creation services. Um, we actually started doing it this year. We found that a lot of the things in which marketing was not working right were issues with the content, you know, listings that weren't optimized, mm -hmm. inform important information that was missing from infographics, et cetera. So we started doing that work ourselves, and we can create storefronts for you as well. Um, I'll do, Kevin, the credit of saying that I'm pretty sure that my Amazon guy also does that stuff. Um, we do. We definitely do. Yes. Right. So both both of us do these things. And uh, yeah, if you want to reach out to me afterwards, we'd be happy to discuss it with you. Awesome. All right. So next question. Is... 
I think someone yeah. asked a similar one to this and I might have skipped it. So if I did, I it's nothing personal. Um, bid down or bid up, what is better? And I think someone else asked about fixed bids. So just for whoever asked this question somewhere else, and I right. probably skipped them. I didn't mean to. But um, what, what are your thoughts on bid bid up, bid down? I'll, yeah, I'll give the bidding strategy talk, I guess, for a couple of minutes. Um, for those of you watching that aren't familiar with uh, what's underneath the question, Amazon gives us three options for how we want our bids to show. Uh, one option is called up and down. One option is called fixed. And one option is called down only. Uh, basically, what all of those mean is that whatever bid you start with, you are giving Amazon instructions on what you want them to do with the bid in possibilities where a different close bid might work. So up and down, which is part of this question, there's no just bid up. They call it up and down. Up and down means if you bid a dollar and um, Amazon thinks that a dollar thirty might be the bid you need to show up properly, you're telling Amazon that um, I'm giving Amazon the authority to spend more than what my dollar bid is, only if it's going to work. Um, down only means the opposite. Down only gives Amazon the instruction that you want to spend the least amount possible. Your dollar bid is really a maximum dollar bid. If you can get away with five or 10 cents, please only take five or 10 cents. Um, Amazon will typically spend more than five or 10 cents, but <laughs> yeah, look, you are five, telling ten, them ten, ten, ten. the maximum you'll bid and not that. Fixed bid means you want to spend exactly that. So basically, if you have a bid of a dollar, you're telling Amazon, I want to spend a dollar every single time and put me in the spot that a dollar gets me to. Even if I could have shown up in a decent place for less, nope, take the full dollar and put me higher. Um, even if you could take a little bit more, nope, I don't want to spend more. I want to spend only the dollar. So just so you understand, and there's a whole discussion about what situations are right for using each of those and feelings gets hurt and people yes. get upset with each other and no we'll leave that brother alone. against brother exactly no, I'm just kidding. So it's not that bad bidding bidding when it comes to bidding down or bidding up i will say that um i strongly recommend against bidding up in almost every situation we try it amazon takes more in the spend and does not give you any extra results um in theory, there are a few situations. If you have a very, very low A cost, not just below your target, but like a third of what your target is. If your target is like 30% and you have a 5%, um, you know, you have a 5% A cost, then you can experiment with bid down and up to see if it gets you any extra traffic or any extra sales. But except for that, in almost every traditional or normal situation, stay with fixed or stay with down only. And the default should be down only, except for the situations where fixed is advisable. So in short, bid down. <laughs> when in doubt, bid down. I, I yes. agree on that one. But that is a controversial one. All right. Nikki Rubino asks, hi, Abe. What do you consider when creating a PPC campaign for a small business? Uh, the most important factor is two sides of the same coin. Number one, what is your budget? And number two, how likely are you to capture business from the people you're competing with? Mm. Um, so obviously when we run advertising, we are not advertising by ourselves on a product page, on a search result page. There right. are lots of competitors on the very page. dynamic environment. It is a, it is a dynamic environment. It's a competitive environment. Um, if you're good at what you do, it's not so challenging, but in most cases it is a challenging environment. And what you want to know as you run an ad is are the competitors you're showing up against people that you have no chance to take a sales from, or mm -hmm. are they people you do have a chance to take a sale from? So if your product sells for $20 and all of your competition is $13.95, do not put all your money into chasing against those people, especially if they have 50,000 reviews. Um, what you want to do is look at other keywords and search terms which match your product in which you have a better chance to show up. Um, those things should ideally be done as you're coming out and developing your product. But if you've got your product and have to start working on your ads now, look at the competitive space, see how it matches your budget. And of course, don't spend all your money chasing things that are not likely to make sales for you. Yeah, exactly. And one example I always like to give is markers. So this, we'll just call it a permanent marker for flip charts. 
probably different variations you could do. A little long tail probably doesn't have the most um, search volume, but the person who's looking for this, if this is going to solve their problem, is highly relevant. But too often people will go after markers. But if you look up markers, it's like crafting stuff. It's highlighters. It's like there's a wide, very there's broad. a wide range of things that fits. exactly, and it's like that with a lot of keywords. So, just because there's a lot of search volume for a keyword doesn't mean you should go for it. And oftentimes, the big brands don't go after the long tail keywords because they're lazy. Right? No, they. What ends up happening with big brands is, in a lot of cases, the people running their ads are not sophisticated, so they'll just show up for just the most basic ways to, you know, to show up, or, in a lot of cases, whatever budget they have is simply used up by those first few words, and that's it. You know, we've dedicated five thousand dollars to Amazon for the month of August. That's it. Five thousand is used up. You're done. So they try to make it stretch with the most important keywords for them. That, that that's how you get your long tail keywords that can work. Gotcha. All right. I, I agree. It's, it's, it's all, well, another thing too, with big brands is sometimes they're just, they just want impressions because, you know, if you ever watched Mad Men, which was, you know, the one TV show from that oh, yeah. took place in the sixties, all they were doing is just giving people impressions. Yeah. Which is, and, and that's all anyone cared about is that eventually if people have enough impressions, they'll buy, you know, the thing, the thing, whatever the it thing. is, lipstick or whatever. Whereas now we have more attribution to say this sale is attributed to this click. Right. That used to not be a thing, but a lot of big brands have not quite adopted that. And they just, they look at it as, well, if they don't buy on Amazon, they'll buy in the store or something like that. Yeah. They, they definitely are not surprisingly unsophisticated in how they tackle things, which mm -hmm. is still opportunity for us. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So then it was asked how to calculate organic clicks that a brand receives. I think one way to calculate organic clicks is brand click count minus PPC clicks. However, there may be other methods available. Um, which looks like they asked the same question twice. So, yeah, uh, um, I think share, I think they might be overthinking it. Um, if you're trying to figure out the organic traffic, yes, subtract your overall traffic from your ad traffic, and the organic is left over. Well, but let's just make sure we do give a little bit of justice to this in the sense that sessions are different than clicks, right? Yes. Uh, Right. So Session. that might point us to what report we would look at for, for folks that aren't as familiar. Oh, gosh. So I'll say this. I don't know the exact report to pull because I'm usually pulling the data through software. Um, mm. And um, in general, there's also an issue in which I mostly concern myself with the overall sales of a SKU as opposed to the market position. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, we're looking at a more granular level at how you're doing for every single keyword you, you advertise as opposed to the overall landscape. So I don't have to worry about it as much. There are certainly brands who are looking for market position. For better or worse, the brands I work with are not so concerned. You know, I'm not working with CPG brands like Johnson & Johnson that say we want to own the landscape for home goods or tissues or right. shampoo, you know? So I typically don't have to worry about it as much. Got it. Okay. Now I would say this though. I would, if you're going to check anywhere, the only report I can think of is you can't really look like at business reports because most of business reports is sessions. Whereas brand analytics, if you're brand registered, um, if you're not brand registered, we do offer trademark services here at my Amazon guy. Uh, now I know why you chimed, chimed in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just thought of that actually at the last second there. So um, oh, yeah. there is definitely a lot of data. Um, one of the things which is important is share of voice. So share of voice is provided through certain software applications that have access to information and they slice it in certain ways, which aren't regularly available. If you're just using Amazon uh, casually is not the right word, but it's the closest word I can think of. Gotcha. So Jason Master Mateo, our own Jason Master Mateo, one of our uh, uh, 
account directors extraordinaire. I'll use that phrase. Um, he is our senior account directors. He is awesome. And he also has a live stream doing Q and A's on uh, Fridays. And if you've ever watched his live streams, he's got a lot of stuff in the background, like toys and stuff, but he's saying you are giving him a run for the money with, uh, oh boy. you've got quite the Funko collection. It looks like. Yeah, I like to buy my Funkos in pairs because uh, okay. they tell a better story get, than one character. They get lonely. Does. Yeah, I don't know. Do you want to go through the tour? Uh, got, briefly, we've got, go, we've we've got, got time Garth for one more Wayne. question after that. Uh, so let's do the question first. Okay, good that's deal. What people, that's what people are here for, except for Jason, of course. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So Michael Anthony asks, "What are the top five to ten things uh, Amazon PP algorithm looks for in a product?" I've never thought it through systematically like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that I have a uh, list that's exactly like that. But I can tell you right off the bat, everything is rolling down from relevance. Basically, yeah, exactly. number one factor is your relevance to the thing which is being searched for. And mm -hmm. then there is all these sub ingredients. So Amazon will factor in the bid. Basically, they're looking. Well, actually, let's see. When you say they're looking for in a product... Um, I'm not sure how to answer that. Well, let, let, let's go down this this direction. Then. So, I've got. I think this is Funko. So that's a th Funko, yeah. Is, yes. So this little dinosaur thing is Charmander, um, from uh, Pokemon. Because sure. I used to always joke with my son that Charmander was my favorite Pokemon, and I have no idea why I even said that. But like I would always say it, Charmander is the best Pokemon. Which people would kids would argue he's the worst. So like, no, he's the best. But if I'm looking for Charmander Pokemon on Amazon, they're gonna they don't want to show me an iPhone case. Right. They want to make sure the most relevant product gets there. And so some of that is looking at like click through rate, what's in the listing, what are the words in the listing. Um, if they show your listing because they think it could be relevant, is it likely to come out in a sale? Because really we look at oftentimes conversion rate as from click to purchase, they look at it as really from impression to purchase. Right. Yeah. Uh, basically, Amazon wants to know that if they show your product to a shopper, that the shopper is likely to purchase it. It's really as simple as that. Um, Amazon has an ideal path that a shopper will take when they visit the website. They expect people to go to Amazon.com. They expect the shopper to make a search they expect the shopper to look at a few products that are shown for that search, mm -hmm. click possibly click on a couple, make a purchase, and be done. They're not expecting people to have to look through a lot of things that don't match what the shopper wants. They really want to get it right so that people keep coming back because Amazon has the right thing. That's right. It. So yeah, it's the more cold. your the more your product matches exactly the thing the shopper is looking for, the more you are relevant in the PPC algorithm. You can outweigh the relevance a little bit with your bid, but not completely. If you are selling a, a Barbie doll for an iPhone case search, a million dollars will not get you to show on that search. It's got to be the right product for what the shopper is searching for because they'll never buy a thing which is not what they're looking for. Exactly. So make sure your words are relevant, relevant to what someone will buy, not relevant to what we believe, but the end of the day the algorithm is very cold it does not care about your feelings it doesn't care what a great person you are or how you donated it to charity it just wants to know is if we show this product is it going to result in a sale what is the likelihood basically all right so on that note if uh you enjoyed this um this session here with abe abe is going to be joining us at the ppc mastery summit We've already recorded his uh, presentation on data, which was a good presentation. And he is going to be for those who upgrade their tickets to VIP. We have special Q&A sessions just for VIP. And A will be joining us for one of those. So those are every day during the summit. Um, so definitely check out. And the summit is a $9.99. It's not even $10. Bucks. Like, like we were talking about, it's hard to even buy. Cheaper than a Funko. An adult beverage or a Funko. Uh, product for that price. And so you can buy yourself lots of Funkos with the results that you'll be getting. Um, 
which if anyone from the FTC is watching, that we believe you should be headed in the direction of that will help you figure out because we cannot promise a result, but we can promise to give you lots of great experts who know their stuff and are sharing some of their best wisdom. So that we can definitely promise, but how you execute on that is up to you. And so speaking of Funco, uh, can you share us a little bit about your Funco and then tell us how we can find you and learn? Oh yeah. All right, let's do it. Let's do All right. it. Over there, we have Garth and Wayne from Wayne's World on Saturday Night Live. Ah, excellent. Right, ne right next to them, we have Dexter and Didi from Dexter's Laboratory. And interestingly oh. enough, a surprising number of people who comment on my Funko collection actually love that show a lot and are tickled that I have that pair up there. Nice. Right next to them, we have uh, the iconic musicians Slash and Axel from uh, Guns N' Roses. Ah. We've got Welcome Crockett and Tubbs from Miami Vice. Ah, okay. And for those of you who really go way back, we've got uh, Lamont and Fred Sanford. If you know the show, that there we go. You know, if you know the show, you will love the fact that I have those Funkos. Oh yeah, that's uh, those are some good conversation pieces. And the funny thing about Funkos is they can be hard sometimes to figure out what they are. Like this doesn't look like Charmander, and seeing them in the box, it's kind of hard to tell what those are like i thought one of those was a magwai um from uh gremlins or mogwai oh, or oh yeah by that. the way i also have tom and jerry behind me oh you got tom and jerry too awesome tom and jerry right there very nice tom and all jerry, right so and also, and also your fun the, the only single is lawrence taylor nice 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 yes well, all right so besides your funko collection if people wanted to learn from you about just in general um your what, what you've got going on with uh, helping people with their Amazon uh, ads and conversions and whatnot, where would they go? Sure. So the best place to get in touch with me is through LinkedIn. Um, I post a lot there. I post my thoughts. I post stories. I give guidance in comments and things. So you can find me in LinkedIn under my name. Uh, I've got my website, which is uh, xpstrategy.com. And of course, besides those two places, I'm on all the rest of the socials, you know, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or you name it, just look for Abe Shamali. Well, look for Abe C. Shamali, because believe it or not, there actually is another Abe Shamali, but I'm pretty oh. recognizable. The other one doesn't have a beard. There, there you go. So that's the yes. distinguishing factor that you got the right person. So, exactly. All right. Well, uh, great job and uh, enjoyed having you on. And uh, for those of you watching, make sure to catch us next time and grab your ticket to the summit, ppcmastersummit.com, so you can check out Abe and about 20 other amazing people. Yeah, it was a blast. Thanks for having me, Kevin.